Hello, everyone. I applaud the organizers on this valuable and timely workshop with focus on children. The topic I will speak about is a holistic model for inclusive education in the context of rural India. And this is something that has evolved with our experience at 41 villages in 21 Indian states. Some background about our founder, Sri Mata Amritanandamai Devi. She is the founder of MA Mutt, which has consultative status at the UN, founder of Embracing the World, Amrita Hospitals, and Chancellor of Amrita University. Last year, Amma was here at the Vatican to sign the Faith Leaders Universal Declaration Against Slavery. There are over 75 educational institutions under the organization with over 100,000 students. And Chancellor Amma is indeed a visionary and inspiration and guide for many of the projects here. This is some background about my department and what we do. Amrita Create at Amrita University. We do research technology for education and well-being, teacher training, inclusive education. Uh, we have our technologies in schools across India, engineering colleges, medical colleges, um, in hearing impaired and disabled. And also the most recent project, the past few years, we've been working in rural villages, directly uh, in the villages, uh, in informal learning environments. Sorry, I did not skip. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is the background, uh, the geography, the terrain where these programs are happening. Our parent organization has adopted over a hundred villages in twenty one states across India, um, and the idea is to provide integrated and holistic intervention that covers many of the UN sustainable goals. India is home to the world's largest rural population. And uh, the technology enhanced inclusive education in India with a holistic approach, what we call education for life and education for living, or translate to education enriched by human values. We work with the children, adolescents, girls, mothers in indigenous tribal communities and in communities that are below the poverty line. So these are some of the challenges that we find for inclusive education. There are children enrolled but not attending school, health awareness and health itself, malnutrition, lack of immunization, use of chemical fertilizers, mental health. The parents um, and adults are often illiterate or neoliterate. Substance abuse is a problem in many of the villages, especially with the men. And uh, we want to make sure that the boys don't get into it in the future. There's a lack of social awareness, rights, the government benefits that are available to them and they are at risk of exploitation. There are school dropouts, uh, both adults and children. And even children that are enrolled are not reading or performing at the level they should be. There is also gender inequality because of customs, which are more prevalent in some of the states. And so, um, we always say that inclusive education is the foundation to achieve many sustainable goals for tomorrow. But we need to remember that inclusive education needs the support of some of these goals today. Without that, we cannot just provide education. 
And that is what I would like to speak about today, a holistic model that we have tested across India. And perhaps uh, you know, many of us can see if we can replicate it in other places. And we would also love to learn from your experiences. So if you see at the bottom of the tree, we require health, we require gender equality, we require to provide quality education, there is value education, and there is awareness. These are the objectives for the adopted villages related to education and health. I should mention that uh, many other departments in Amrita University are providing various other interventions. So there is energy, there is electricity, there is clean water, there are toilets, there is income generation, vocational training. Um, and this probably the success of the model is because it is provided as an integrated solution for a sustainable village. So it is not limited to one area. And as an example, I will tell you, when we were teaching awareness and we wanted to talk about uh, hygiene, and in some villages we could not do it because clean water was not available. So it was until you provide clean water, it's hard to talk about washing hands and drinking clean water. So that is why that holistic approach is so important. In our objectives, the first objective is to enable inclusive education. This means girls, scheduled castes, uh, indigenous people, those in poverty, disadvantaged by socioeconomic or by terrain. We want to accelerate rural literacy, uh, both basic functional literacy and giving them additional years of schooling. We want to improve the quality of education. And this includes teacher training, technology, health and well-being. This is really important for children because a simple thing like malnutrition, it is not only wasting or you know the physical body that's not growing, it also affects cognition and learning. So things like child deworming, nutritional supplements, preventing substance abuse, all of that come under health and well-being interventions. Then we have the education enriched by human values. So there is a practical component, social gen gender awareness, nurture the local heritage. So whatever that local tradition is in that particular place, nurture that and sustainability education. And then the last one is very important too, that's community engagement and em empowerment. This is how you make sure that the model is sustainable. So we are involving the mothers, the children, the girls, the youth. We are also involving our Amrita University students to go there. And the components of the holistic inclusive education, the the, one of the important things is introducing them to the digital world. And my background all was with technology and education. I thought that would be very simple. And uh, when I first did a prototype and showed it to Amma, and we tested it in an orphanage, and Amma said, uh, you know, what is the use of testing it in a school? Go to a rural area where the adults have never gone to school and try it there and learn from there. And when we went there, we found that there is no in internet, there is no electricity, and so you know complex algorithms that require uh, large servers, you need to do things with the low processing power of Androids. It needs to work in multiple Indian languages. And uh, so there's a whole lot of challenges to developing technology that is adapted for rural India, and that is not available for free outside. So that was one of the main things that was done. And that is very important for quality of education because the teachers that we get are not highly educated at all. To go to these rural villages, we need to find a local educated person in the village 
train them extensively, handhold them, monitor them using technology, and um, you know, a coordinator system and visits to village. So teacher training is a big component of this. Uh, pedagogy, technology, the subject itself. As I said, the teachers you find here are not at all qualified like the teachers you would find in cities. Nobody from a city would want to go there and work there. So uh, even when we introduced them to tablet education, you know, the first, we didn't realize how bad it was. The first time we had a teacher uh, not showing the tablet to the student, it was facing the teacher and there were kids around her. So simple things like that, we learned that the teacher training was a huge component. Classroom management, because they are all multi-grade classrooms. So how to manage such a class. And then human values and mental strength, you know, so th those two are very, very important. You need to develop human values and also the strength when things go wrong, uh, as, as it often does for them, how to face it. So there is social, cultural skills, yoga, uh, meditation, gender equality, value education. Then the parent organization provides scholarships to the children, and the condition is they need to keep being in school. And uh, even though the government school is free, often they don't have money for uh, uniforms or uh, you know, many of the things, books required, and so this helps them with it. Um, the other thing we teach is gratitude to Mother Nature. I know in our first session we said respect for Mother Nature, and uh, in the Indian culture we would go a little more and say gratitude, because it is, we get so much from Mother Nature, it sustains us, and so we are thankful. And when you have gratitude, respect automatically comes. We also have flexible learning hours. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, our children, if they are working in the fields, we, those months, we change the time. So this is some of the technology. A lot of it was developed for uh, schools, like the first one, the online lab science simulations for high schools. Uh, we have won many awards with it. Um, and uh, now it is being translated to multiple Indian languages and uh, provided on the tablets. Sustainability education, we have, uh, the, both of those are free on, uh, on the website, free access. So the sustainability education, that particular video that you see when our Prime Minister launched uh, the Clean India campaign, BBC World News took that off YouTube and included it in their World News. Um, then we have the Amrita Health Worker Training, so uh, it's used to train health workers uh, in villages. We have uh, software for adult education, we have software for human trafficking awareness, uh, social awareness. So across the scale, we, we, everything we do, we support with um, e-learning simulations and content. So in the health and well-being, our Amrita Hospital is a big part of it. They have trained over 2,000 health workers so far. And now we have developed the um, simulation, health worker simulations that uh, helps them learn. So these are people that are directly in the village and a few people in the village are selected and trained uh, to provide basic health and then connect the villages with the nearby health centers. Most One problem in the villages, many times they are far from the um, access to health. And our doctors go there and there are health camps regularly. Because of that, we are able to monitor our children, you know, the BMI and the nutrition and uh, all of that. We also take care of the adolescent girls uh, they are often malnutritioned and the menstrual health and other things. They will be mothers of tomorrow. Um, we provide a nutritional meal or a nutritional supplement where required. 
We also train them about nutrition awareness and try to work with locally grown produce that is nutritional. And that differs in village from village to village so that the model is sustainable. And then substance abuse is another big problem. So we have a beautiful pro program called the Ambassador, Student Ambassadors. And uh, it's the adolescent age groups. What we do is we train a few of them in schools. And then these students in turn train the rest of the school and the parent teachers and the community as a whole. And we continue to mentor them every month with activities. So it's, it's not like you go and do a one-time training and come back and they forget about it. They are actively involved. They may do a play. They may do a mime. We may have competitions, awards, and they take it to the community. We want to promote gender equality, the power of the adolescent girl. Because of the success of the previous program, we have the adolescent girls do the ambassador work with human trafficking awareness, adolescent health, respect for women, preventing child marriage, child labor, keeping girls in schools, and adult literacy for women. And then community engagement. Uh, uh, we have adult ambassadors. We have a group in the village that we mentor. And they are the ones that will promote education and health awareness. And uh, we talked about the substance abuse ambassadors, the girls. In our adult literacy, we actually have some children. You know, we encourage children to take literacy to the parents because it's very difficult to teach you know, for the adults to want to learn. Now they are working. I have two more minutes. OK. Um, oh, I didn't switch. OK, sorry. Uh, some success stories. We reduced the dropouts in one village from 16 to 1, primarily through awareness sessions by Amrita University students. Um, the second one in Gujarat, for the first time in a village, we had girls study be beyond grade 8. The problem was those girls were, uh, there was the school only went up to grade 8. The girls were not allowed to leave the village. And so we coached them. Some of them, one girl was married, a six-year break with a two-year-old child. And we had such children, they want to study. They were not allowed to leave the village for studies. And so we coached them, and they took the exam. Um, you know, and one of them got 88%. So they want to become teachers and nurses. And the next is an equity in education. We have trained 422 in e-literacy with uh, an 84% pass rate. 62% of the beneficiaries were women, girls. Um, all tribals. A literacy with our software, we are able to, um, they're able to learn the Malayalam alphabet in only 16 sessions versus, versus about 30 without. So benefits of our model. Um, so holistic education for life, living, innovative technology, adapted for rural areas, promotes health, well-being, gender equality, empowers the whole community. It's scalable, sustainable, replicable. We have 41 villages. We are going to um, scale it to about 130 in the next couple of years. These are some of the awards and achievements. Uh, in one year, we got the NLM UNESCO Literacy Award for Adult Literacy. Um, That's the overall impact of our technology and interventions in 21 states. Um, you know, the, the last one you see is a huge grant we are working on for teacher training uh, using technology to teach science. I had a video, but I don't think we have the time. So this is Amma's quote, the future of the world lies in the hands of the younger generation. Our children are the flowers of tomorrow. They should spread their fragrance and beauty throughout the world.